So in this series of videos, I want to go over how to uh, model with recursive sequences. So we're looking at um, growth, we'll be looking at exponential linear growth, and also different types of growth. But we're going to focus on recursive sequences in this video series, and we'll um, eventually move over to using these recursive sequences to uh, analyze basic finance problems, like mortgages and loans and uh, investments and so on. But let's start with this first scenario that we have a certain bacteria population and this certain bacteria increases 42% each day. The population initially consists of 100,000 bacteria and we want to write a recursive sequence to model this scenario. Okay, so I've, I've got uh, this new notation here that you might not have seen before or seen a little bit in the uh, last video series. But we're going to let... let me, New color here, n is always going to equal time. And specifically in this case, it's in dates. So generally, this uh, n, the index of the recursive sequence, will be time. And we just want to specify what increments of time are right, this p sub n. This is going to represent the amount of bacteria after. And excuse me. After n days. All right, and the symbol for the old population. We're going to write that as p sub n minus one. So p sub n minus one. represents the old population and the new population. We're going to represent that with P sub N. So the way you read these recursive sequences is the previous value um, is P subscript N minus one. And then the new population is P subscript N. And in this case, how is the population changing? Bacteria is increasing by 42% each day. So I'm going to here and say plus 0 0.42 times P sub N minus 1. All right, because this is what we want to think about. Well, what does that change represent? In this case, it's increasing by 0.42 times the previous population. So we put the entire sequence together. It's P subscript N equals P subscript N minus one. So this represents, I'm going to take the previous day's bacteria and I'm going to add 0 0.42 times P sub and minus one. So I'll look at this equation one more time. The new population is the previous population, p sub n minus one, plus 42% increase. So p sub n equals p sub n minus one plus 0.42 times p sub n minus one. And just want to note, we can also write this as p sub n equals 1.42 times p sub n minus 1. Just two different forms. Notice the p sub n minus 1 and p sub n minus 1 here are like terms, so we can combine these two. Um, but I really want you to focus and make sure you understand the first equation. The second one is just algebra. And the initial condition, we're going to note that with P sub 0. P sub naught, and that's going to equal the initial population, 100,000 is the initial population. All right, so this is a quick uh, summary. N, the subscript, is almost always going to represent time, some time increment. 
P sub n is going to be the amount of bacteria after n days. P sub n minus 1 will be the old population. P sub n is the new population. And putting this all together, the new population is the old population plus the change, which is this case in an increase of 42%. All right, so uh, I wanted to use spreadsheet software. I'm going to uh, show this in both of these, Excel and Google Sheets, to model the bacteria over the next 10 days. Before we do that, I just want to look, just notice how you analyze this. If I wanted the population after one day, that would be the previous population plus 0.42 times the previous population which would be 100,000 plus 0.42 times 100,000. So if we multiply that, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, this would be 142,000. And we're going to do this a lot quicker in spreadsheet software in a moment, but if I wanted the population after two days, I would take the previous day's population plus uh, 0 0.42 times the previous day's population, and that would be the 142,000, plus 0 0.42 times 142,000 would be the bacteria population after two days. Up here is P sub 140,000. This is the bacteria population after one day. So this is kind of how you read these recursive sequences. And as I uh, talked about in the, the previous videos, recursive sequences um, are good because they're kind of simple to set up. The bad part is you can't you know, jump the line. So if you want to figure out what's the population, say, after 10 days, which I want to do in just a second, you have to figure out every single day from the beginning Day 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. So um, what we're going to be doing in this class over the next month or so is learning how to use a spreadsheet software, such as Google Sheets or Excel. Um, there's other spreadsheet software you can use, but I'll, I'm going to show um, with these videos using Excel or Google Sheets. So how do we model this bacteria population over the next 10 days? All right, so I'd suggest if you've never used spreadsheet software to um, Google Google Sheets, open up a Google Sheet and kind of follow along with me. And I would encourage you to you know pause this video frequently just to make sure you're matching up exactly what I'm going to do. So I've got a Google Sheet document opened up, and I want to model 10 days. So I'm going to put a little label N. in days, and this will be my um, bacteria population. In Excel or Google Sheets, whenever you're, um, you write something in and it goes over the, uh, it's called a cell, you just need to highlight between the two cells, double click, and it'll automatically open up. All right, I want to get 10 days. We're going to start at day zero. Most of the time in this section, we'll start counting at zero. One, two, three. And I could type all the way to 10. There is a nice shortcut in Google Sheets or Excel. Highlight all of the, um, the days. Make sure you type in at least, I'd say, three or four. You should see a black or blue square on the bottom right. If you hover your mouse right on top of that, you should see a black or white plus sign, depending on your edition. Click down your mouse, drag down, and notice we're automatically going to get um, up to 10. So let me do that again. Pretty cool feature in Excel or Google Sheets. It recognizes patterns. You usually want to do at least three, zero, one, two. Highlight all three of these. Hover on the bottom right corner until you see that uh, blue or black uh, square. Hover over, click your mouse down, and drag down. And go down as far as you need to. We're just going to look at 10 days. All right, so then what I want to do is then 
enter this recursive equation into the spreadsheet software. So first thing I'm going to do for bacteria population, zero corresponds with 100,000. So at day zero, the P sub zero is 100,000. And now here's where I want to make sure to pay attention. And if you've never done this before, I highly encourage you to open up a spreadsheet, whether it's Google Sheets or Excel. And right here, start with equals and either type or click on the cell above. So it's the bacteria population, 100,000 plus 0 0.42 times. Click on the cell above, which is B2 for my spreadsheet here, or you could just type in B2. And when I click enter, I should get 142,000 because this is taking 100,000 plus 0 0.42 times 100,000. And that's what we get, the exact population after one month. And now that you've got that typed in, and if the cell is highlighted, you can go to the bottom right till you see that black plus sign, or blue, sorry, black or white plus sign over the dark colored square. You can either click and drag down or double click. I just double click my mouse, and what just happened? If I click on the cell below, what this does is it takes the amount in the cell above, 142,000, plus 0.42 times 140,000. So we see the population after two days is 201,640. So that's why I didn't write this in here. 201,640 would be the population after two days. And uh, what I want to do is then create a scatter plot. Create a plot that will show the, uh, the growth of this population. So in Google Sheets, I'm going to highlight both A and B. So I think the best way to do that is either uh, hold down your mouse on A and just scroll over until you see both the columns are highlighted. Click on Insert and then Chart. Insert Chart. And you've got a whole bunch of uh, options over here. I want to do a scatter plot. So right here for Chart Type, click down. And scroll down until you see scatter. There we go. Click on scatter. And then I want you to do one more thing. Um, use column A as labels. So make sure these two are clicked. Use row one as headers. And use column A as labels. And if you notice right here, it gives this population. It starts off. Oh, yeah, let me click this. So notice right here, with this, uh, uh, the data starts here at 100,000. This is a million, actually. And then it shows how this uh, population increases over the next 10 days until we eventually get to uh, over 3 million. And one other thing that you might want to look at, I'm going to have you do this later, is to uh, click on Customize and make sure you have a vertical axis title. This one I put as Bacteria Population. A horizontal axis title, I'm going to put Days. And then Chart Title, um, let's see, I'll just keep this as Bacteria Population. And click Exit and shrink this down a little bit so you can then see here we have a scatter plot it's showing this value if you hover over each uh, dot it says the population right here this is eight so after eight days your population is uh, 1.6 million or so all right and that's how you create a uh, scatter plot and look at a recursive sequence in google sheets